racing here in PSGL. All five lights are lit and it's pedal to the metal. And it is go, 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 go. Thomas Ronha getting away well. Nicholas Longay, second place at this moment in time. Fabrizio Donoso, a steady start as now Longay looks to take the outside line through turn one. Can't stop Ronha who leads the way. But look at Omnia, looking to find his way through past Donoso. There's three cars dueling for the back. Otis Lawrence trying to make his way through. Look at Prejnader who's right to the midst of this fight here over 10th place Icabena through the inside outside for Max Wiesel through the middle and Alpha Tari as though they make their way into C curve three wide through this next left contact between the Aston and the Alpha Tari as they make their way through still more and more they're nearly they were nearly four wide scrambling now and through the next left a spin oh no Prejnader's gone Prejnader's round that is absolute disaster for Philip Prestrader. Was in the middle of the three wide section throughout the, the whole part of that first part of the lap. Otis Lawrence trying to fight on Andre Tarabukin, trying to go all the way around the outside. He might make this work, you know. That is a lovely move from Otis Lawrence around the outside of Andre Tarabukin to take P6. And he moves up into towards that top five position. But that was a, such a shame. They went three wide all the way through the first sector. And unfortunately, Philip Prestrader just got squeezed in the middle. No, no, absolutely not. He is cold as ice, as I alluded to. We've got Jana Watmir as well making moves here on Fabrizio Donoso. How many times have we seen these two come together in the past? Donoso, though, with the inside line. Though Jano will have the inside heading through C curve at turn five. Down in towards turn seven now as they rise their way out of Earth curve shortly. Of course, Jano now with the nose in front. The Mercedes into third place. Now moves ahead of Fabrizio Donoso, who has been in the form of his life here through Spain qualifying. Out qualified Jano. Otmir, but Otmir says you're not having it this time. Third place on a plate. The Dutchman now in the podium places. Could Ferrari be the ones to, uh, to, to unlock that potential? Certainly could be. And uh, well, he's coming down towards time. I think this could be the move, George. Here comes Longa. Ron our defense. It's around the outside for Longa. If he fancies this one all the way around the outside, Brilliant. turn one. There it is from Nicholas Longa. Moves up into the lead of the Spanish Grand Prix. Ron didn't make it too easy for him. Carried the speed around the outside. And Longa leads for the first time this season. Let's not get too ahead of ourselves. We've still got this championship to decide. We're on round six, and there's the first pit stop, Barry Boroman bailing in. Yeah, Barry Boroman coming in, and uh, I'm not sure whether he'll be the only one. I mean, he's the only one I'm seeing boxing right now, so a very early call from Barry Boroman. In fact, I think he's the only one who's actually going to stop this time round. Ron Hart getting very close behind Longay. Not enough to make a move, though, as they peel through the next right at turn three. Ron Hart very close, though. Might have a chance as well heading through turn four. Does not choose, though, to make the crucial overtake. Ike Bena now into ninth place, chasing after Max Wiesel, who's got eight and a half tenths to find on Wilson Hughes. Those two coming together through the initial uh, sector as well. But now we're going to see, certainly, the front two have got to respond, would you say, Jack? Oh, Longa is holding up Ronar big time. Of course, this is the team game being played already at Ferrari. Ronar went for the move in turn one, couldn't get it done. But you can see Longa slowing up on those apexes, and keeping Ronar at bay. He was going for the move, it didn't work. This is going to help out Barry Bormand here big time in this race. Keeping Ronar at bay here. Look at this on the exit. Again, Ronar no way through. He's going to have to go around the outside. Look at, look at this from Longe. Absolutely very, very good stuff from him. And then again, slows up on the way through the corner. This is big stuff for Barry. This is going to help him out hugely. Backing up the pack here is Nicholas Longe. And this is going to be frustration. Frustration there as Obmir peels in. He knows he has to respond immediately. But here comes Ronar again. This will be the move for the lead now. He'll be very frustrated at this. And then the move in the back on Otis Lawrence on Donoso as well. Moves up a place. But that is team tactics at play at Ferrari already. Does Ronar respond now? Yes, he does. He's got to. In comes Thomas Ronar now. He sees that Opmir's come up behind Barry. He's got a big task now. Longe follows him in. Otis Lawrence as well. He's on a, having a great race today. Wilson Hughes staying out. And Isfan Pukic has the fastest lap of the race. But we've got the top five, I suppose, have all come into the pits. We're watching now. This is going to be crucial. This is a big moment for Barry Borman's championship as well. He needs every position he can get now. Down the back straight. Opmir following behind him now. Watch on the right-hand side. Borman with the fastest 
lap of the race now. Where does he come out? There is Ron Ar emerging on the right hand side. Borman is going to get in front of everybody and he's into now a net P2. He's also got tyre temperature, George. So he's going to have a go at Ron Ar here if he possibly can, but he won't have the ERS really. He's going to have to stay behind. Here he comes with the tyre temperature. Does he have enough to get alongside? He doesn't. Ron Ar uses that ERS to stay in front, but Borman with that team tactics from Longay is now up to P2 and is fighting Ron for the lead now outside line for Borman. He's got the tyre temperature. Does he have enough to get in front? He does not quite. He's getting the door shut in by Ronar here. Now Ronar's going to keep him behind just about into the next left-hander. This is so close, but Borman moving into a net P2 now. Ronar just about hanging on by the skin of his teeth. As they head down now towards turn one, Yardo getting closer. So is Ronar to the front wing. Barry goes defensive. In comes the Dutchman. Outside line in towards turn one. On beer, on beer now. Net P2. A sensational move. He picked his spot. The Mercedes now risen above the Ferrari. The plan may have worked so far, but not enough to usurp Ronar. Oh, here we go. Wait, this is the move now. Jack West, he's hung on for, hung on for as long as he could. And he's now been dispatched by Thomas Ronar. Aubrey needs to get by here cleanly. And he's on the crop with the fast slap of the race, of course. But again, this is an opportunity for Ronar to try and maybe get away a little bit here. He'll want to get by Jack West as quickly as possible. Again, there's still an opportunity for a safety car. But again, he's still well within his rights to fight for position here. But again, he's just not going to have the grip to, to deal with uh, all the cars behind him. And through he goes. Uh, for for this but again you can't blame Jack West of course we see plenty of you guys try this week in week out hoping for a safety car and again positions matter yeah and as a result of that Barry's now lost DRS here comes Longay and Otis Lawrence late on the brakes round the outside of turn one he's going to have to run off the road there Otis leaves him space to come back on and Otis will hang on to that one Lawrence fighting with Longay very hard here now Longay on the attack does he have enough to get in front here defensive line from Lawrence here comes Longay all the way around the outside of the next part of the corner he's not going to quite have enough traction he'll have the inside for the next corner though Otis Lawrence leaves him just enough space to work with on the inside Longay runs him out of room on the outside still side by side up towards the chicane they go again long way up the inside Lawrence keeping his nose in round the outside super fighting between two stalwarts here round the outside maybe long going to stick his nose in all the way through there Lawrence still there Donoso looking and watching and waiting for a gap here does he have a gap he stays there again a little lunge from Longe Donoso looking for the switch back on the both of them sideways from Longe and again this is a massively brilliant fight and Lawrence has somehow hung on as they come into the last sector here. Turn one, Wilson Hughes managing oh, to dispatch no. Tenoso. Oh goodness me, we've lost Tenoso. He's left the session. What has happened, Jack and Anne? Long game now up into fourth. Incredible moment really on that last lap. This will be a big moment in the championship. This will give Thomas Ronar over a race victory in front to put him about 20 points clear but Otmir will stay with him nonetheless out through the final corner what a performance he led from the get-go he's going to do it again it's back-to-back -back victories Thomas Ronar wins the Spanish Grand Prix and goes back-to-back -back in PSGL Jan Otmir finishes in P2 Barry Borman on his return P3 and his teammate Nicholas Longay P4 Otis Lawrence in the top five for the first time this broadcast was brought to you by GT Omega proudly supporting PSGL.